Nargis Rahimi, CEO and founder of EVA, Norwegian startup that develops cannabis-infused products. Previously worked in Kabul, Afghanistan with private and governmental projects. Thank you very much for having me, Albert. I love this plant, if I would start from there. And the reason is because I have learned a lot from it. Um, I have, uh, I grew up in Afghanistan and uh, it, it's been very widely produced and consumed over there. So, uh, but for me it was more interesting to to understand the plant, what it is, what it actually can do for with humans' brain and body, and uh, what it has, like what is the science behind the plant overall. Uh, so then I started to um, expand my knowledge on the potential it has from the health perspective, um, and um, that's on one side. And then on the other side, we have all these um, countries going. Uh, legalizing or decriminalizing the plants uh, one after another and uh, for me it was really interesting to see this uh, how the market expanded in a very um, uh, small amount of time and this uh, enormous value that it has brought in different industries and um, let's say we can look into the um, pharmaceutical industry we have food industry we have cosmetics and and there are so many more uh, so eventually I got impressed by the amount of research and development that has been done into this industry and I also believe that there is a lot more to do because the plant is still not fully discovered and there is a lot, uh, a lot of more in research and development that has to be done. Uh, so yeah, that, that's basically why I decided to get involved uh, sooner than later. Why you decided to make it to Norway? That's a good question. Well, uh, so the initial idea was to to do this and uh, to make these range of uh, infused products uh, within Scandinavia, like to develop it. It not necessarily have to be in Norway, but the plan was to do the research in Norway and develop it in Denmark and uh, make Scandinavian product to international market. Uh, but because of this. Uh, complexity, this legal complexity that we have and, um, and here we couldn't uh, continue and we had to open a subsidiary in the UK to continue our research and development. So, uh, which means we still remain as a Norwegian startup, um, but to respect the uh, laws, we have to do the operation work outside of Norway. I just mentioned earlier, there's a lot of countries, you know, way going ahead, um, cr decriminalizing or legalizing or um, putting it more accessible into market with different through different pro products. But uh, I believe Norway is quite behind in that sense. So that was one of the reason. And the second reason is that uh, we don't have any initiative that could possibly, you know, um, shape the future of this industry. So uh, yeah, that's. Those are the reasons why we decided to start from here. What is the legal status of cannabis in Norway right now? It's complicated because uh, if you look into cannabis, cannabis have so many other extracts. So um, the uh, non psych I'm talking about the non-psychoactive -psycho part of the plant, which is uh, CBD, which is also the extracts we were using in our products. Um, it is... Uh, THC, the psychoactive part of the plant, it is illegal, completely illegal. Um, the CBD part is legal um, if it has uh, zero, less than 0.2 percent THC on it. Um, and uh, the only way you can get it is through uh, doctor's prescription. Products are not developed here. Uh, it's only one product that is approved, only one CBD product that is approved. Um, by the Norwegian Medicine Agency. Other people who need the uh, medical uh, cannabis treatment, they have to again go through their doctors and get what they need from outside of country, Netherlands in this sense. In this case, we have a lot of uh, people who's getting their um, uh, medical cannabis sourced from Netherlands. Is there any change that can come and we can use cannabis in Norway? Norway is going to take some time. It's not, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's uh, too um, 
close to happen. Um, I know that they, on the government level they're working on it, on the um, um, decriminalization, not now but in future. Why? Because Norway is still part of this European Union that they have to follow certain certain laws on, on that. It's not a, only about changing the, uh, bringing the products outside, it's about changing the uh, the laws and how, we how much time we're going to take to put these um, completely new set of laws and how that's going to imp get implemented and all of that. That's going to take some time, but I think uh, one way could be uh, to at least be open for the uh, research and developments because that's the way to, I believe that's the way that could, you know, potentially shape the, the future of this industry. What is actually different between cannabis and marijuana? The plant itself, it's cannabis, but we have, you know, different extracts of it. We have hemp on one side, we have marijuana, and we have uh, hashish on the other side, which is again different parts of the plant. And the only differentiation is that the, on the uh, concentration of CBD and THC that I was just talking about, and which is the two known part of the plant. One is psychoactive, one is non-psychoactive. If you look into the cannabis plants. It has over hundreds of uh, cannabinoids, which CBD is one of them. It is uh, a part of the plant, so if you're consuming it in whatever form, it's not going to um, make you high, but uh, the this ex specific extract has been in under research and has been uh, used for decades now for different health conditions, including uh, we have uh, chronic pains, we have uh, inf different inflammations, we have Alzheimer's, um, uh, cancer prevention, and there is still the research going, like ongoing research on this. And again, this is, CBD is only one part of the plant. We have over hundreds and they're still discovering more day by day. So, and each with different health potential. Tell me more about uh, EVA, the startup that you are involved in. Uh, what we're trying to do is basically to produce these uh, infused products for, and we're targeting different uh, problem areas. Um, we're entering into the uh, beverage industry at first place. Uh, so our first products will be more in uh, beverage form and iced tea. Uh, it will be in iced tea with different flavors. Um, and we're designing this for uh, basically pain and stress management, but we're also um, um, targeting different problem areas uh, with uh, our future product lines, which is going to be um, uh, different beverage lines. And also we're entering uh, food supplements like um, we're thinking about um, producing uh, capsules, we're thinking about tinctures and it, the list just goes on. In terms of markets, because of the legality issue, we want to be able to um, sell the products in Norway. Um, that's why we have put it in a long-term uh, plan of uh, as a Norway as a market is in our long-term plan. We're entering UK as our primary market, uh, so it's going to be start from there. We will produce the product, we will do the research and development there. Uh, the production will be there. We're going to uh, sell the product there, and we're also targeting different European Union countries that are um, CBD friendly, like we're thinking of Denmark, we have Germany, Spain, and um, uh, France as a few of target markets. But those are going to be more of um, uh, online targets and uh, we won't be there as on retail and in future probably yes but for now we're targeting only uh, online. What are the challenges as a Norwegian startup uh, in a heavy regulated country like Norway? One is I would say more on the uh, from the regulatory perspective you know because why because I mentioned earlier there is a um, very the the extracts are very unknown um, and it can be very time consuming or uh, confusing to uh, make sure that you're aligned with the countries the laws of the countries that you're working at like in our case now we're in the middle of uh, Norwegian laws and the laws in the UK so for us in order to operate legally, we have to make sure we're aligned with both countries and uh, also we'll have to consider some of the laws uh, in the European Union. Um, why? Because we're targeting the um, the uh, some of the European countries, as I mentioned. 
Um, and that's on one side. And then another thing is the raising capital part of it, I would say. Why? Because the uh, industry is very heavily regulated again and the legal risk is very high for us as a Norwegian company. Why? Because um, from an investor perspective, um, if they would want to um, invest in a Norwegian company, they'll have to accept all the uh, you know, legal risks that they're about to take. Um, and uh, also another thing I want to add is that um, it's, uh, the industry is very biased and um, sometimes uh, things like uh, your background, your nationality and things like that ha can have really, can affect really on the process of this whole uh, trust building or how you're, you know, convincing someone that you're going to be able to to um, complete this project successfully because um, uh, from my experience just the fact that I'm from Afghanistan sort of scares some people but for me personally it has been challenging to uh, build that trust. Thank you very much Nargis.